Hey guys, welcome. Glad you're here. I'm going to give you some updates with Logix PBR Painter Pro. This is my absolute first add-on that I ever uh, bought and downloaded and used in Blender. And it's pretty cool. Uh, the new ID system is pretty cool as well because it's going to let you automatically bake ID maps in. Yeah, you heard it. One click ID maps. That's crazy. Let's get started. All right, so one of my mini Blender 3.6 versions opened up this evening. Uh, once you've downloaded the add-on, you'll see this pop up. You'll have an info box. You'll say thank you. It's a really nice add-on. You have some documentation, a few other things. When we get straight to it, you don't have a mesh object. So the add-on tells you that. Actually, one of the uh, two of the add-ons I make now will tell you that, which is pretty cool. It's a good feature. So we can go ahead and drop in a monkey head. Let's drop in the Suzanne and I immediately want to go ahead and I'll subdivide that with two subs and apply it and just get rid of it. And the really cool thing is that if you come to the UV editor, you'll see that Suzanne already has a UV map for us, which is perfect. So you can hit spacebar or however you got to do it and type in shade smooth and grab that. I've got mine in the Q menu, so I'm just going to shade it smooth like that. Now you don't click new here because that's just going to create a material canister. Don't need that. Click new pick shader. Metallic or specular workflow. You either end up with a diffuse or a base color. Specular glossiness or metallic roughness. Most people are familiar with this because uh, Blender is not really, it's not really prone to the specular workflow as much, but you can do either one. Uh, we're going to keep it simple because I feel like there would be some beginners that step into this. And so I'm not going to do anything but the base color setup. Everything's there. I'll drop down the bake panel. It's really cool. You can select anything you want. just kind of depends on your PC. You're going to have to experiment around see what you do. I'm going to click 2048. I'm going to bring the quality down to 2 just so this goes a little bit faster. It won't really reduce the overall quality much. I'm going to switch to GPU compute. I'm not going to use the height mesh with the extrusion and the ray distance in this one. But I am going to go for the normals, the ID, and the ambient occlusion because we're going to need the ambient occlusion especially around the eyes and stuff so if you come to the id and drop this down you'll see vertex color or mesh element id select mesh element id and that is going to bake your id map automatically it's crazy jump over into the material preview under the ev engine and start the fireworks click bake make sure you set everything up the way you want it and you're good and it'll live bake for you shouldn't take too terribly long i think that most of these bars take you know anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds depending on most pcs and it'll phew, it'll just kind of jam out like that and you're live baking the uh the maps here i can't really move the viewport much don't try doing anything now if you bake the ambient i'm sorry if you bake the curvature map which we did not bake it's going to take a good bit of time but if you do bake the curvature map it's going to seriously enhance the smart materials when you kind of have and i'm kind of rambling on while this bakes you have the two workflows metallic and specular okay we can collapse this and then you have custom layers which are right here there's a custom layer and you have smart materials but first let's check that id map i'm excited so like right here you just hover your mouse you'll see that you have a view mode for material but if you drop it down you'll have everything absolutely everything's under here and we have the id map which was baked out and so that's insane that's super cool now what we could do is we'll jump back over that's the base color we'll go to the material because you can preview everything, yeah. So if you want to go, we bake the ambient occlusion. So you'll be able to see the ambient occlusion areas. So if you go to occlude something, you can kind of see where that's going to pop up. Go back to the material. So let's add a base layer. This is just for color. It is custom. And I actually want this to get rid of that. I'm going to add this layer, and I want it on the base. Now I can come right down here. This is a surface layer. Keep it very simple for this tutorial. And right here, if you click on this, nope, click down here, and you'll have some different colors. Okay. So what we can do is we can just make this completely black for the ID. 
uh, so we can start picking IDs and you'll see in just a second uh, what we can do is let's change some stuff here and let's add a smart material to this and that base layer is needed you'll see why in just a minute now I want to add something like the aluminum it's always my favorite and nothing's assigned to the IDs I'm gonna press T to get rid of that T panel it's so annoying and so we have to assign it in order to see it and if we pull this back this is our um, opacity slider for this particular base color and we can slide that back and remove it. We'll just see the base layer, the black base layer. And so it, it works pretty cool. You're painting in, in black and white, just like if you're in texture paint and you hit X, you can switch between uh, black and white and do your fills and all that good stuff. Uh, but we're not going to get too advanced. I do have a full playlist that's going to just it's keep you busy. It's going to keep you busy for a, a couple few days um, on Philogix PBR Painter Pro. Most of it, like about 95% of it, is still applicable to the new version. There's a couple things, like there's a couple things that were removed button-wise, and the add-on was cleaned up, so you see a difference. Now what we can do is on this layer, the aluminum, I'm going to come over and add a custom layer. All right, so I'm just going to click here, and it'll change a little bit. And right down here, you'll see the ID layer. You go ahead and click on that. And now you've got the ID layer, and it's just going to show completely black. So let's assign that. And a real easy way to do that is just drop this back down to the ID layers. We'll add an ID layer color because now this parameter popped up since we clicked that. And you can grab the teardropper here, and let's just select this red. And we're just going to work with one at, uh, at the moment. And you've got opacity sliders down here. So we'll jump back over to Material Preview. And yay, you did it. Nothing changed. Just kidding. So you got a tolerance slider right here. And if you bring this up, you'll see that I've now selected that ID layer to be that color. And that's pretty sweet. So you could do that to the other one as well. And I can pull that ID layer into this layer. Or excuse me, pull that ID color into this ID layer. So let's go ahead and add another one. And yeah, okay, yeah, if you click on the teardropper, it switches automatically. That's a new feature I just remembered. Super cool. So if I select that, uh, now that's reading under that layer as well. And I love it. Absolutely love using IDs. And so you can kind of see the more complex of a model that you have, uh, the more this is going to come in really handy. So you could come over here and you could name this as your smart aluminum and uh, let's see there we go okay not going to type it out we're just going to call it alum apparently because it won't work oh wow that was arduous okay now we can double click here and we'll call this base uh, lb for uh, base layer black and just hit enter so now let's go ahead and add something else let's add another color let's add something to the uh, background color here so I can come over and I'll add another smart layer and this one could actually I'll go to the base channel so you've got your base your, uh, metallic your roughness your height your normals and the custom layers and I'm not really covering everything. I know I'm kind of jumping here, but uh, I've got some other tutorials that cover all this. So I kind of would expect you to go back to the basic one. It's got a paintbrush and it looks, it's got a canvas and a paintbrush on it. It's that one. I'll put a link in the description. So no worries. You can go check that one out and give you all of the basics. So I'm going to come over here and I want to add my smart rust. I like the worst. Uh, bleh, excuse me, the rust course. And so we'll add that onto the background. And you see it did not change our ID layers, which is super cool. Then over here in the selector, you'll have an option to kind of like change the overall look. And what you'll notice probably uh, very quickly 
is that you've got some separation here. You can kind of see the lines. So what you do is you drop open UV and you want to project this a little bit differently. You can go from UV to box and we'll just give that its little bit of time to switch over. This is doing a lot and that will cure that for you. That looks pretty cool. You remember you do have in opacity sliders. So you can kind of change a little bit of that. I wouldn't really recommend that for this um, particularly. You could kind of bring bring this up just a little bit so you can kind of see what we got. So that is pretty cool. And what you can do at this point, and just real quick before we leave this spot, if you still have some problems, you know, with the lines showing up, like your your UV is kind of messing up a little bit, you can just blend this right here and it'll it'll attempt to uh, blend in any overlap in the islands for you. Um, pretty automatic I mean, you got to use a slider but it's pretty cool and now one of my more favorite things to do I'm gonna grab the smart material here I'm gonna add another custom layer I'm gonna come over to the paint channel so the little, uh, little icon is the add image layer if you middle mouse wheel down and it's kind of laggy it's a little bit laggy I've got too many versions of blender open at the moment in fact I think we can just kill this one. Let's get rid of this one. Don't save. All right, cool. Yeah, woohoo! Look at that. That's so much better. Okay. So all you gotta do is click New. Okay, and then select whatever you had selected. I had twenty forty eight. You can just put a little asterisk right there in the number two and do the math. It'll put 2048 if you want to be lazy as I am. You can click on the color and drop your alpha channel down to zero. Click OK. Give it a second to load. And then get ready to click paint. Come down here to this little brush and click on the brush. And then putting the cracks on this, you have two different levels of cracks. Kind of like cracks too. That might have been my uh, most favorite one that I've used. Now you can click on this and you'll see we're going to be painting on uh, the black right this minute. So it technically should show up and I'll just hit uh, F to kind of bring the brush size up. And what that's going to do is it's going to scale the cracks a little bit and I can bring the strength up a touch. Pretty cool. And then I'm just going to like, let's bring the brush size down a little bit. We're going to add some craziness to this. And because I'm painting IDs, I'm not going to um, overlap my other mesh. It's not even going to happen. So that's pretty cool. I'm kind of come in here and paint a little bit more. Give Suzanne some bloodshottedness. I like, I like, I like. And you can just kind of tap, tap, bring it in. Just tap a little bit. I'm doing it kind of thick. This doesn't matter. All right, so that looks really good. And this is not unlike the texture paint area in Blender. And if you don't know, you have to click finish, but you see the little asterisk there. If I click finish, it's still there. So what you would do is you can come over here and you can click save. And you can also pack the file. And when you click save, it's now saving that in the blend file for you. Okay, so now with this layer, and I really hope I'm not losing anybody, and believe it or not, these really are like bare bone basics, okay? Uh, so there's a lot to learn. It's a good workflow to get into to kind of create your own textures. And what I can do now is I am going to mark this layer here, and I'll just call this one cracks, because if you don't name these, you are going to destroy any hope lose any hope of going back and figuring things out. It'd be very frustrating and you won't even want to use the program at that point. So you have to name things. Just keep that in mind. So under cracks, I'm going to click this and this is going to be an anchor point. And now I'm going to come over to height and it's not going to allow me to select anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little uh, like a, 
how do I say this? More like a, a, a dummy setup, if you will. So I'll go back to the base channel. And I'm just going to add another custom layer to this and give that a sec to load. Didn't change anything. So I'm going to come back over to the height channel now. And what that did is that kind of allowed me to open up the properties in this channel. So now I'm going to drop the anchor. Yeah, I'm going to drop the anchor here. You have to forgive me, guys. It's been like six months since I used the program. But I will get back into the swing of it. And when you click that anchor, you're going to get an option down here. And it'll say Smart Aluminum Layer Mask because it remembers everything that you forgot or that I forgot. And when you give that a moment to load, you'll see that we have height information on our cracks. Super, super cool. And you can play around with the opacity if I can find the right opacity for this. All right, so there we go. Just going to go back to the layer channel and then figure out where you are and grab that opacity and the parameters. And you could kind of bring that down, in or out, change it how you want. You've got some cool features there. And I won't get into it in this tutorial, but you can even put the emission in the cracks. Super cool. We don't have the emission channel, so we can't play with that in this one. But there's tons and tons and tons of things to look forward to. Like I said, this is insanely customizable. Um, yes, Philogix PBR Painter Pro does sponsor me. You guys got to go grab this add-on. It's insane. Uh, it's well worth learning. Uh, it's not necessarily as complex as it is customizable. So it's very like user friendly. You can jump in and just until you get used to it, you know, you can come in and you can jump into the the base layers here and just play around with these and play around with the parameters. So whatever you pull up, just kind of play around with those parameters. And then once you're all said and done, you can export. You can export everything. If you have metallic work workflow, specular, whatever you've selected, this is more advanced user type stuff. Uh, but once you've done that, you can set up everything here, how you have it, active materials, file paths. You can export the UV map as well, which is, you know, standard, you would want to be able to do that. And apparently I added uh, material four here. I didn't really want that. So anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Smash that subscribe, smash that like. I just want to say thank you to all my uh, subscribers from the first subscriber all the way to what I have now. And then potentially as the channel grows, you know, we can all grow together and become a blender experts. Have a great evening, guys. See you all in the next tutorial lesson.